Nirmila, um, Sudisha, Department of Basic Science and Humanities, Chemistry, and BVR at Masapur. Uh, regarding course name, Engineering Chemistry, I am going to deal about the batteries. So, in the batteries, in previous classes, we discussed about introduction of batteries and importance of batteries and applications, different types of applications of batteries and lead acid battery also. We discussed about the secondary battery. So, in that secondary battery, we discussed about lead acid battery. Come to the today's topic, uh, we are going to discuss about H2O2 fuel cell. So, see the H2O2 fuel cell. So, what is meant by fuel cell? So, it may be any of the cell which is nothing but which acts as electrochemical cells, whereas the conversion of chemical energy contain easily available fuel oxidant. Nothing but the chemical energy will be converted in form of electrical energy by undergoing combustion process is called as fuel cell. So here we have different types of fuel cells. In that fuel cells, one of the fuel cell is H2O2 fuel cell. So in H2O2 fuel cell, Come to the diagram. See the diagram first. So, which is made up of a porous material, which is nothing but if you take the this fuel cell here, it consists of the cells two inner porous electrodes, which are made up of graphite. So, these two electrodes are made up of graphite. One is acts as anode, and second one is acts as cathode. So, the anode and cathode both are made up of graphite rod, and which is with platinum are PB alloys coated with Ag and nickel. Ag or nickel. If you can coat with Ag or nickel, which will be acts as one is acts as anode and second one is acts as cathode. So that means it consists of anode and cathode, which is having a porous material. The graphite one, which is having the porous material. So come to the construction of the cell. If you observe this cell, in one side we are passing the H2 gas and another side we are passing the O2 gas. We have the KOH which is nothing but 2.5% of KOH which is acts as an electrolyte. So in this fuel cell where oxidation and reduction both are takes place, oxidation is meant by nothing but you know that what is meant by oxidation? Loss of electrons and in reduction process whereas gaining of electrons are takes place. So at anode when oxidation processes takes place at that time see the reactions Come to the chemical reactions before going to explain about chemical reactions first of all what is the basic principle involved in this one when whenever we pass as a h2 gas when i'm passing the h2 gas so this h2 gas go through the porous materials gra graphite rods right so when it goes through the graphite rod which produces h plus ions i think but for example if you take this one it, it produces h plus ions and electrons which liberate electrons so what is meant by oxidation? Oxidation is nothing but liberation of electrons. So loss of electrons is nothing but oxidation. And again the H plus ions which are released, if you take for example, if you take 2 moles of H2. So what happens here? It produces 4 H plus ions and 4 electrons. This H plus ions which undergo the reaction with OH minus ions which are in the electrolyte solution produces water molecule produces water molecule nothing but what is the electrolyte we are taking the electrolyte is KOH so how what it produces it produces OH minus ions so the H plus ions which are liberated at anode and the OH minus ions from the electrolyte which undergoes the reaction produces H2O in this case, it releases some amount of energy also. And at base, if you take at cathodic side, nothing but at cathode, the reduction reaction takes place. So reduction reaction means when we pass is the oxygen gas. So the oxygen gas reacts with the liberated H2O and produces OH minus ions again. That means here the reduction process is takes place while undergoing the reactions which gains the electrons released by the anode. So that means the cathode undergoes reduction by gaining of electrons. So if you see this one, at cathode, the reduction takes place and the O2 gas which is reacted with H2O, which forms OH minus ions. That means here, 
when oxidation and simultaneously the reduction both are takes place that in but the redox reaction takes place here if you see the electrode if you see the fuel cell so the fuel cell nothing but a typical fuel cell if you take any of the fuel cell which produces only 0.7 volts of energy right so which produces this energy but here we are connecting series of cells then only the working will takes place in continuously for the generation of energy so we are connecting the series of fuel cells so if you take any car uh, any car or generators or other vehicles if the energy production will be required right so at that time we can connect the fuel cells which are in systematically so next come to the chemical nothing but what are the main uh, the basic reactions what are takes place that first so here if you observe the reactions so the chemical reactions first hyd at anode so at anode what is the reaction takes place at anode anode nothing but the h2 which is there which liberate h plus ions and electrons the liberated h plus ions react with oh minus ions from the electrolytic solution produces h2o and again what happens we are taking oxygen like again the oxygen molecules are there that o2 react with liberated h2o some amount of h2o right and released electrons which produces four moles of oh minus ions at the cathode this is the cathodic reaction so at anode oxidation takes place oxidation takes place at cathode reduction takes place by gaining of electrons so here both oxidation and reduction both are takes place when we see the when we observe the overall reaction here when we observe the overall reaction what is the product we get here h plus ions h plus ions get cancelled and here four electrons and four electrons get cancelled because both are in opposite side so if you see the reaction here chemical reaction so 2h2 plus o2 and here two h2o molecules and four h2o means two h2o molecules are left over here so two h2 plus o2 gives rise two h2o plus some amount of energy so that means the energy is also released so this is the overall reaction which is occurred at H2O2 fuel cell. So these are the reactions which are takes place at H2O2 fuel cell. So come to the when we have the overall principle of like H2O2 fuel cell, the oxidation and reduction reduction takes place through fuels only. That means in form of H2 gas only. H2 gas and O2 gas we are passing. That H2 gas react with the OH minus ions again, which release some amount of water. And again, the water gas which is passed through in the opposite direction, opposite side at cathode, which is reacted with the leftover H2O and releases OH minus ions. So that both the ions, it means anode and cathode, oxidation and reduction process takes place by undergoing these reactions simultaneously, which liberate some amount of energy. So the liberation of energy is takes place here. Come to the application part. If you see the advantages of this fuel cell, which is high efficient fuel cell. The fuel cells are more efficient fuel cells and no chemical wastage will take place and no noise will produce. When the cell is operating, there is no noise will produce. And not only that, the gases are non-toxic gases. The gases which we are passing through the fuel cell, that gases are non-toxic gases. And the amount of energy, the E0 value of this fuel cell, which is 1.23 electron volts of energy. So next come to the applications. Mostly based on the applications only we can use this fuel cells, right? So these fuel cells mostly used in space vehicles, submarines and military vehicles also. So we can use in space vehicles and submarines and military vehicles also. And the water which is produced at fuel cell. So if you see the first uh, chemical reactions here, if you observe the chemical reactions, 
which produces water, right? This water is very pure water, which is useful to use for the drinking purpose for the astronauts. So, the astronauts which are, who, are, who are travel, so they use this water for drinking purpose. And not only that, if you take these fuel cells, so um, mobile power generation and uh, aerial vehicles, some of the unmanned aerial vehicles and backup power banks, nothing but backup power generations also we can use this fuel cells. So these are the applications. Come to the limitations of these fuel cells. So these fuel cells, nothing but the lifetime of the fuel cells are not accurately known. So we, we can't measure the lifetime of these fuel cells, right? So the accurate we can't accurately know about the lifetime of this fuel cell. And initial cost is very high. Initial cost is very high. When we install this fuel cell, the cost is very high. And the distribution of the hydrogen is not proper. That means we, we can't estimate how much amount of hydrogen we are passing through the fuel cell that we can't estimate, we can't distribute it. So come to this also, these, these are uh, type of, uh, types of, here we are using, where we are using electrical generations and sometimes we use that nanoporous materials formations and not only the electron depositions. So at, in different types of areas, in different areas we can use this fuel cells. So this is about the fuel cells. So come to the today's topic. What we discussed in today's topic regarding fuel cells and uh, the brief content about the fuel cell is nothing but which convert chemical energy into electrical energy by undergoing combustion. Fuel oxygen system is nothing but by undergoing combustion process. So which is one of the electrochemical cell. Here we are taking electrodes as nothing but the porous electrodes which is containing of nickel coated with platinum or palladium. So these are the alloys we can use as electrodes and one side we are passing H2 gas from anodic part and another side we are passing O2 gas from cathodic side. So the, at anode oxidation takes place here these are the reactions undergoes. So at anode oxidation takes place and at cathode reduction process takes place by gaining of electrons. So by undergoing oxidation and reduction which release some amount of water and energy also. So that energy, how much of energy it releases? It releases 1.32 electron volts of, 23 electron volts of energy. So this is about the, regarding fuel cells. And come to the applications, we discussed about different types of applications. As I said, mostly in submarines and military vehicles and space vehicles, we use these fuel cells. And the water, which is essential for astronauts for drinking purpose. And come to the disadvantages, as we discussed, limitations are disadvantages. These are very expensive at the time of in installation. And not only that, these hydrogen, how much energy we are using, how much energy, uh, how, how much of hydrogen is passing through the fuel cell, that we can't assume it. And accurately, we can't measure the lifetime of these fuel cells. So, thank you. This is regarding today's course. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.